here's a snapshot of just a regular run, nothing in between, just the uh, electrodes uh, transferring the spark. Uh, and I just thought I'd start with this one to show you what it looks like, you know, just a uh, regular run in the Lord Kelvin's thunderstorm. And we'll move on. You're seeing a copper rod insulated. There is no, it's not connected to anything. It's just standing up between the electrodes. Okay, what you're seeing here is that spark a snapshot of that spark where the electrodes are even across from each other and that copper wire in between them. But notice how the spark goes in one side of the wire and out the other side. Like It's uh, energizing that entire piece of wire to get across. I thought that was pretty cool. This is just another shot of that same thing, but a different spark. And that one looks about the same, but you can see it going in one side of the copper and out the other. All right. This is the third spark. It looks a little different, but basically the same result. Thought that was cool too. Okay, now I've got my electrodes kind of offset, hoping that that might uh, show the spark and which direction it's going a little bit, maybe uh, get a little better visual of what's going on here. Oh, my back panel was... Uh, shorting it out. So there we go. I'm not sure if we can tell which way that spark's going, but the center rod is not grounded. It's just standing up on a piece of PVC. It's insulated from everything. It's just up in the air. It's just conducting what's happening between the electrodes. Okay, here's a snapshot of that offset. It's kind of the same as when they were straight across, but you can see the, the, the difference or the, the distance between the sparks up and down the, the copper piece of wire there. I thought this was kind of cool how that uh, comes in and out in different you know locations like that. Pretty wild. I've got some stranded insulated wire here. I'm going to try to take one strand of this and see if I can't make the spark follow a conduction trail from one electrode to the other. Anyway, that's where I'm getting this wire from. It's, I don't know what the gauge would be of the individual strand, but let's see what that does. As you can see, I bent this wire in a U shape, taped it to my little stand here with PVC. And I'm gonna try and see if I can make the spark conduct through this wire with a gap. And you know, just conduct it. I'm gonna move these farther apart and then have the wires coming up gapped from each electrode where it can't go straight across, but it has to go through. I mean, it makes sense it will, but we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got that piece of U-shaped <coughs> wire in there. And I ran it all ago and it didn't record. The phone didn't record. But there you saw it. It conducts down one side, up the other, and shoots across. Or out. Goes in one side, I'm guessing conducts around the U of that strand and then continues on to the other electrode. 
if you saw that. And a while ago, when I was watching, the right one would move a little bit every time the spark would initiate with it. And it looked like it kind of pulled it towards the electrode and then pushed it away, the right one. And I didn't see any movement on the left one. <clears throat> I got a cold again. Yeah, that right one moves a little bit when that spark. Right when it starts and when it quits, there's a movement right. It, the right wire pulls to the right and then back to the left. Right at the start and the end of the spark, it moves. Now I'm going to watch the left wire. I don't see near the movement on the left one. Uh, it could be the way the wire's standing there. Uh, the right one's bent a little more different in a different angle. But anyway, it conducts all the way down through that U, back up and out the other side, because it's not going across. So it's conducting through that strand of wire. I'm not sure what gauge it would be. It's smaller than what I use to wind coils, you know, like coil winding wire. It's smaller than that, but it's not laminated, so, it, you know, when you laminate wire, it seems and feels bigger than what it actually is because of the lamination. But anyway, that's pretty cool. Okay, here's a snapshot of that going through that U-shaped piece of wire. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like the solid straight wire, but this is conducting all the way around that U-shape. Pretty wild. Here's a side view of that plate, how it was sitting in there. If you see, it's really between the electrodes. There's not much. It's sticking up completely. It's hard. My camera doesn't want to focus on the right thing. But anyway. That's what it is. It's just a little square plate I've turned up with an angle, triangle. Maybe 10 thousandths thick. I don't know. Let me get something dark behind it. It's not very thick. Just a square plate. Sticking up between the electrodes. Kind of blocking them from each other. Like so. Anyway. Either you've already seen it run or you'll see it run next. One of the two. Laters. What you're looking at now is I have a, that piece of uh, brass plating I showed you uh, sticking up between the electrodes. It completely covers the surface area of them and you see the spark just seems to conduct right through the center of this little plate. There doesn't seem to be any, it, it, it varies on the left side. I think that's where it's coming out. If you notice that spark seems to be disturbed in more than one little uh, shank. I guess it goes both sides. Well, whichever way it's going, the exit side seems to split up a little bit, be, be disor dis disorganized, best way I can explain it. Anyway, it's very strange. Now that little piece of brass plate, it's a shim. I'm not sure of the thickness, five, ten thousandths maybe. Maybe more than that, maybe 20 thousandths. I don't have a measurement on it. It's not very thick. And as I showed you in the uh, little clip where I showed you what it was, like I said there, I'm not sure how thick it is. But anyway, it does kind of disorient the spark more so than the round copper uh, piece of wire did. This is flat. And it's definitely between them. I mean, you know, it's not going to the edges of this. It's going straight through it. No doubt about it. But it is going in in one I can look from the top. Maybe you can't tell, but it's going in on one place and coming out on another. So it's not coming, going straight through the brass. Of course, that could be variances in the, you know, uh, contaminants in the metal when it was made and what have you and what's on it since I, I cleaned it but maybe not good enough but it doesn't uh, 
do it in the same place every time. It moves around. It might shoot from one electrode to low and the other one high and then side to side and then reverse or close to it. It just moves around. It really disorients the spark though. It really disturbs it. It still goes through at the speed you think is normal, but it just really seems to disturb it. That's strange. I'll let you have a look from the side. Uh, how this looks from the side angle, how much of it's covering the uh, electrodes. I may do that before you see these sparks. I'm not sure how I will put it together, these clips. Anyway, it's pretty wild. Flat piece of brass. This really messes with it. Getting major fray, though. Both strings. It's almost like it's, uh, it's got to energize that entire plate before it can do spark and jump. This major fray. Getting some orbitals too. I normally don't get orbitals around my inductors. And I'm getting some orb orbitals. Very cool. So that little piece of brass in between there causes major resistance in the capacitance. It's resisting just capacitating and sparking like my normal streams do. You know, fray out, spark, fray out, spark. I'm getting orbitals. I've seen that on YouTube before. But I usually don't get orbitals with my normal uh, inductors you've seen me use. Normally don't. I mean, they're not orbiting around and around and around, but they're flying upwards and kind of curling towards the inductor and then flying off or dissipating. Anyway, that was kind of wild. snapshot of the spark on that uh, brass plate you can kind of see how it kind of disturbs the spark it doesn't look you know like it does between two electrodes or it did with the wire or even the conductor the u-shaped wire pretty wild you can see i don't know if you can see here i made me a little coil on my insulated piece of pvc there it's number 20 or 24 uh magnet wire you know it's it's got our uh, laminated but i've sanded off the end so they will conduct and we're going to try that in between the electrodes and see what that does next okay this is this is with that coil of uh, magnet wire these are the two ends sticking up There it went. So even through that coil, uh, I probably had 18 inches of wire coiled around. I'm not sure how many turns. I didn't count the turns. I just counted the length of the wire. Uh, you know, measured it. Approximately 18 inches. And it'll charge all the way through that coil. But I notice it goes in The electrode on the right is going in, you know, down on the wire somewhat, but the electrode on the left seems to take it out near the end. Now there it moves down. I thought it was coming out of the very tip, but now it's not. I'm getting good fray, but I'm not getting orbitals like I did with that piece of brass. This is more just a normal fray, like normal. That was good. It's a little high humidity day. <coughs> Pardon my cold. That's pretty wild. It's shooting through, you know, 18 inches of wire coiled around that PVC insulator.
snapshot of that coil of wire, you know, between the uh, electrodes. And it's pretty wild how that left side, it's showing like a fork here. There's two of them. I'm guessing that's coming out. Might be going in. I don't know. I need to get a high-speed camera to see which way these sparks are actually going. Thought that was cool for a coil of wire between the electrodes. Small coil.